Hey, welcome to another episode of the On.net show. Today we've got Brom and he's going to be uh, telling us about Azure Event Grid. So quickly uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, so I'm the PM for Azure Event Grid. Um, I've been with Microsoft for about a year and a half now. Okay, and how's that been working out? It's been pretty awesome so far. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Well, you ended up on this show, so yep. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's pretty <laughs> Made good. Made it to the promised land. Yeah, totally. Uh, so how about you tell us about Event Grid and what kind of um, you know, cloud domain does it does it fit into? Yeah. So um, Event Grid is a messaging product, um, and it's meant to be basically uh, a connective tissue for all of Azure. So what we're doing is building first-class integrations with pretty much every Azure service. And when there's a state change, uh, those services will emit an event. And these can be pointed to pretty much any endpoint or built-in event handlers within Azure. OK. So pretty much all the Azure teams I talk to tell me that they're the connective tissue of Azure. <laughs> so, so why are you really the connective tissue of Azure? Yeah. So um, the goal is here. Um, we're building a pub sub system, um, but within the ecosystem of Azure, we don't want customers to have to go build one-off connections or you know, even write a lot of code to get up and running. So it's really a browse and select uh, sort of operation. You say, I want to listen to my storage account anytime a blob is created, send an event to this event to this uh, Azure function to handle it. Um, it's supposed to be very quick and easy to get set up, sub-second end-to-end latency. Right. So what I hear you saying is, you know, if I'm uh, a function or I've deployed a Docker container or app service, mm -hmm. it doesn't really matter. I can either participate in um, sending uh, events mm -hmm. or, or receiving them. Exactly. And yeah. And does this relate to just if my code is running in Azure, or are there some not in Azure scenarios like desktop that are relevant or even IoT? Absolutely. So we are uh, we do have first class integrations with Azure, but we are also a general purpose pub subsystem. So you can emit events from your desktop application. You can uh, receive them at pretty much any public HTTP endpoint. Um, so you are not restricted to native Azure event types or Azure as a system um, at all. You can connect any services or anything that can run code, really. Right. So if I had a uh, console app that cared about um, blobs in a particular blob storage account, could I get um, events every time one of those was updated and then like just write those to the console? Yep, absolutely. You would. Wow. Yep. <laughs> and, and you're saying, you know, sub-second latency. So pretty much as those, those blobs were being, you know, updated, it would be like almost instantaneous. Yep, it enables real-time reactive programming with your Azure resources. Wow. Yeah. Now, Clearly, with Event Grid, I imagine people are using it within Azure, mm -hmm. you know, with functions or whatever. Have you seen people using it in this other way that we kind of talked about, you know, either with desktop applications, IoT applications, or even web applications that are running on prem? Yeah, totally. Um, we have a number of customers that have, you know, uh, various files that they're generating, they're dumping them into a store, and then they want to go process them on prem. So they're uh, firing events, picking them up and going and taking these files and processing them elsewhere. I see. So it's, you know, clearly there's customers that are all on-prem, and there's mm -hmm. another set of customers that are all on the cloud. And so I guess the scenario we're talking about is really interesting for these customers that kind of have this sliding window for where, how much of their work is being done on-prem and how much is being done yeah. on Azure. Yeah. Yeah, interesting. Um, so back to EventGrid. Um, what would you say are maybe the three most popular ways that people are using Event Grid today that you see? Yeah. So the first one is uh, certainly serverless. So this is, you know, I have changes happening, state changes happening to my various services in Azure, and I want to react to them in a way that requires writing code, but I don't want to, you know, host my own infrastructure. I just spin up an Azure function and point my Event Grid um, subscriptions to those functions or those logic apps, and I can get up and running incredibly quickly. Um, the second big scenario we see is ops automation. Right. So we've integrated with Azure Resource Manager so that any time a control plane event happens within Azure, uh, Azure Resource Manager emits events as well. So we can basically subscribe to events on a resource group or an Azure subscription when a VM is created or a SQL database is deleted, and we can point those events to any endpoint where we're running a script or a function 
and do things like you know check for proper protocols, tag the VM, um, whatever needs to be done there. And then finally, the third big scenario we see is general purpose PubSub. So we are, you know, we fully support, as we've talked about a little bit, you know, you can have an on-prem system that is using EventGrid to publish its own events and consume them on-prem um, or those hybrid scenarios we talked about as well. Right. So if you're fami more familiar with one of the other clouds, uh, what would be the analogous service that is in that cloud? And um, does it have the, sa the same feature set as EventGrid? Yeah, so um, if you're more familiar with Google, the uh, analogous service there would be Google's PubSub. Uh, Google PubSub is just a general purpose uh, PubSub engine. Uh, it doesn't have filtering on the wire like EventGrid, and it certainly doesn't have those first party integrations that EventGrid does. If you're more fami familiar with AWS, uh, their service over there would be um, SNS, Simple Notification Service. Uh, they have recently introduced uh, filtering on the wire. Um, and this is actually a pretty cool feature that both EventGrid and SNS have. This is basically um, you're publishing events and you're sending them to multiple different event handlers um, that are subscribed to these events. If a certain endpoint doesn't want to consume all the events uh, before on the wire filtering, it would have to filter at its own endpoint. You're wasting cycles and compute. Um, now we filter on the wire. Um, so you only listen to specific event types if right. you want. And presumably there might be a latency win there as well? Um, not, not no. really. It's okay. in the milliseconds. Okay. Not something that customers will notice okay. with so the filtering. It, so it's more the comp cost? Yeah. CPU cost. OK. Yeah. Um, so well, if, uh, there would be latency if you were filtering on your endpoint and you had really high throughput. Uh, we scale out incredibly well horizontally, so we don't see latency issues. Sorry, I meant on the other side. Ah, sorry, yeah. Then there, you if you, in high throughput scenarios, you do start to see latency, yeah. you get clogged up. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, and the other part of um, EventGrid is those first class integrations that we have um, that doesn't exist in SNS. Um, if you wanted to do something like that, you would have to first use a Lambda trigger and then pipe it to an SNS. Um, endpoint and then go from there. Um, EventGrid instead, we are trying to be kind of a uniform, ubiquitous eventing substrate. Connective tissue. Connective <laughs> tissue. <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Have I convinced you? Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely convinced. Um, so I want to go back to this um, VM scenario that you mentioned because sure. I, I think the, the functions one is pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so I haven't done this particular scenario, so I'm going to kind of make something up and you can okay. tell me if this is true. I kind of imagine that there's these applications that people have built that do need to create VMs who haven't kind of uh, found the one true way yet with mm -hmm. EventGrid. And they, um, they get to this point where they have to create a VM. They actually have to have another VM running that actually kind of manages this. It creates the VM through, um, through ARM for, and then um, kind of like connects to that VM and has a script that runs that makes sure that makes sure that VM is is um, created correctly. Mm -hmm. uh, it feels kind of like very procedural and um, very kind of like uh, both has to create the VM and then configure it and potentially has to have this other VM running all the time. Um, with the thing you mentioned, it seems like it's much more reactive. Mm -hmm. That um, you know maybe there's just there's VMs created of one type that need to be configured one way, and, mm -hmm. and then VMs of another type that need to be created in another way. And then you just have these listeners that do the right thing in, in the right situations. Is it kind of like that? Yeah, pretty much. I mean, so even before EventGrid, we did have Azure Automation in mm. uh, Azure. So you could run your scripts there, but you still have the problem of you need to know that a VM has been created. You have to actually send something to that script. Um, and trigger it. So with EventGrid, now you don't have to have prior knowledge. You don't have to make sure you're hitting the right script. It will just listen to all control plane events coming into whatever resource group or Azure subscription you pointed at. And any time a VM is created, you don't really have to do anything. It'll just trigger that automation script. It'll run the script um, and tag the VM, send a message to a Slack channel, wh whatever you really need. Yes. Um, teams. Teams. Um, <laughs> Can you tell me, um, some of this feels a little similar to queues, which is obviously this existing mm -hmm. feature in Azure. Can you compare and contrast? Totally, yeah. 
I mean, at a high level, the big difference is that a queue is push-pull semantics, and event grid is push-push semantics. Um, the other big difference is that uh, queues are, we put them out there as a general tool, and you write your own code to push things to it. You write your own code to pull from it. Um, while you can do that with event grid, you can get up and running um, and use our first class integrations without needing to do that. And in fact, one thing we're actually working on is actually um, a queue integration for event grid. So you could push your events, your native events, to a queue. So if you have a scenario where you're not up all the time, um, to receive these uh. events, you could wake up, look at your queue, say, oh, Event Grid has pushed some events to my queue. I'll pull them now and consume them. It's a little bit like when you um, land in the plane and turn your phone on, and then all of a sudden, like all these text messages. Totally, um, yeah. yeah. It Makes also works for buffering scenarios if you can only handle certain throughputs mm. for spiky workloads and anything else. Makes sense. Yeah. So I'm guessing that there's a Visual Studio um, story for this. Yeah, absolutely. And maybe even for .NET. Mm -hmm. So how about we take a look? Uh, I think you've got a sample here. Yeah. Um, I guess before we dig deep into it, can you show me, is there a NuGet package that yeah. people can look for? So our NuGet uh, package is available on NuGet.org. Uh, we have both a runtime and a um, management. Uh, NuGet packages. Right, so this one's called Microsoft.Azure.EventGrid, and can you click that dependencies node so we can see? Okay, so it looks like it's supported to all the way back to .NET Framework 4.5.2, and there's also a .NET standard library. So that'll work on also .NET Framework, but .NET Core um, and Xamarin. So yeah. that's that seems to be covering a lot of bases. Absolutely. Nice. Uh, okay, let's look at um, Visual Studio. Yeah. So um, what we have here is a pretty simple sample. It's just using our publish SDK. Um, it's connecting to an event grid topic. And a topic is just your entry point to event grid if you're publishing your own custom events um, to event grid. Um, and we're just publishing a very simple um, new employee event um, that I have here created. Um, we can go over to the Azure portal and uh, create event subscriptions on this topic we're publishing to, point them at a function. Um, I can show you how quickly this happens in real time. Yeah, please do. Um, and we can actually go consume those events. Um, so this is the function that we're interested in uh, sending our events to and handling them from. Um, so we just need the endpoint URL for this. I'll copy that. And I have in this tab our um, event grid topic. So this is just a DNS endpoint that we're ha we have the keys to to send our events. Um, I create a new event subscription. I can say it's net events. Um, I give it the endpoint that I want to aim it at, and I hit create. And um, as soon as that is done deploying, uh, we will see a new event, um, a validation event pop up here. Um, so the validation event is our kind of security measure. Um, what the validation event does is it's, so event grid in a way, because we have uh, massive fan out capabilities and very high throughput, is uh, kind of the world's largest DDoS. Yeah, I, know. I thought you were headed <laughs> that direction. So um, the first thing that our code is going to do here is actually handle a validation event that we send every new endpoint that we register. Um, so we're just going to look for that validation event. Um, and when we receive it, we're just going to echo back the validation code. And that just means that I own this endpoint. Is it kind of 2FA for um, event grid? Yeah, in a way, Okay. definitely. Um, so. It seems like we have to use 2FA for basically everything these days. Yeah. <laughs> so um, our, uh, our script here is set up to actually handle a number of different event types. Um, I'm just using a, um, an if check to see if we're having a validation event, a blob created event, or this new employee event. Um, so this is just a really sim simple function that could handle a bunch of different event types being thrown at it. Um, so if I open my log and then I go back to my Visual Studio project, um, I can just hit this endpoint with a, um, 
with an event that we're uh, spitting out, and we'll see it appear pretty much instantaneously on the other end. Okay, so this is the side that's sending the event, is yep. that correct? Yeah, we're sending the event from Visual Studio. Oh. Is it because the you might have the console locked by that block? Yeah, I've just started again. Sometimes when you select, um, yeah, oh, there we go. Yeah, that's it's totally what happened. So we should see an event. Well, let's ran this. We have our unsubscription here. Everything's configured correctly. Yep, just checking. I have everything configured correctly. Uh, these are the events that I had published earlier. Um, interestingly enough, for some reason, we're not getting an event through. Um, Hopefully, we're connected to the, uh, the internet here. Yeah. <laughs> Let me just create a second event subscription. Right. So we're um, demonstrating the diagnostic yep. kind of patterns that you would use for yeah. um, this. So um, we have our endpoint here. Let me just make sure. Yeah, that should be. Well, I'll just overwrite that old endpoint to make sure that we have the right one. Save the changes. Um, it has succeeded, so we should have. We should be getting a validation event right now. And we're not, which is interesting. Okay. Uh, yeah, let's let's run the client side code. Yep. Let's see if I got it. Running. Ah, okay. There we go. So um, we just got that event through. So maybe it just somehow we ran the client side wrong the first time. Yeah, I either ran the client side wrong the first time, or I just didn't properly connect it. Um, so uh, we should now see. I think I might have just not copied the full URL or something. Um, if we click on metrics here, um, we would see. The way we would diagnose this is uh, this has a little bit of latency. We're working on improving that, but soon, yeah, if we wait a minute or two, we would see our um, su successful and failed delivery count uh, right. show up on this graph. Um, but all we did was we matched our event type as our new employee event, and we wrote to the line to the console um, their name, who they're reporting to, and their email here. Um, obviously, we could do much more interesting actions on receiving right. an event. Totally, but this kind of demonstrates yeah. the, the fundamental. The fundamentals, yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Um, right, so this is obviously live in Azure. Mm -hmm. People can go and use this today. Yeah. So, um, yeah, so they obviously would download the NuGet package, but from an Azure standpoint, um, do they create a new event grid subscription? Is that kind of what happens? Yeah. Um, so there's a couple ways to use it. So if you want to um, send your own custom events, first you would create a new topic. Um, and this pretty much just gives you your entry point into event grid. You just give it a name, um, a resource group you want it to live in, and uh, what location you want it to be in. Right. And now you can send all of your events from different sources or a whole bunch from a single application to this endpoint. and then. Once you have that topic, um, you can go create event subscriptions on it. The right, other yeah. option is in if you go to a storage account, for example, um, you will actually see event grid as an option uh, in your resource menu here. So that would be that blob scenario I talked about earlier. Yeah, exactly. And here, you just create new event subscriptions. You again point them to whatever endpoint you want. and you click Create, and now anytime someone creates new blobs or deletes them in this storage account, you get an event fired to this endpoint every single time. Awesome. Yeah. Okay, well, I think we've learned um, 
quite a bit about event grid today. Um, I certainly think I've picked up enough knowledge that I could, I could use that. Mm -hmm. Amazingly enough. Um, <laughs> Uh, any closing thoughts or you know resources that people can look at um, that you'd like to share? Yeah, so azure.com forward slash event grid um, takes you to our, uh, our product page where you can view our documentation, learn more about it. Um, and we're very excited for uh, where we're going in the next year or so. Um, we're working quite closely for, with a number of people's uh, favorite product teams in Azure. Um, to have more and more integrations. So we're, it's only going to become a more powerful tool as we go. Right. Awesome. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for coming by, Brom, and um, uh, telling us about EventGrid. And this has been another episode of the On.NET Show. Thanks for watching.